hey guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make the jamaican flag as well as to attach it onto our previous halter top if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial for the halter top we already have it uh it's already available on the channel as well as the written pattern on uh, my online shops so today we're going to learn how to make the middle section as well as how to attach this this is uh, a piece inspired by Shansia's uh, Jamaican outfit and this is just a personal opinion I felt like the vest would be on the warmer side since I'm using acrylic yarn but even then I would prefer a halter top as opposed to a vest so in this video we are just getting inspired by the outfit of Shansia to make our own version of the top so the skirt tutorial is already up on the channel and uh, today let's get started making this piece that we are going to match with our Jamaican skirt. The materials that you'll need are a 4mm crochet hook, I'm talking about the flag and the attaching bit. So a 4mm crochet hook and then a pair of scissors, a darning needle, I don't know where mine is at the moment, uh, here it is, a darning needle. And I think that's it. That's all. And the yarn that you'll be using is uh, any yarn of your choice. As long as you get the colors right, you will need green, uh, yellow, and black. And that's it. Let's get started. All right. So you're going to grab your best color and you're going to make a slip knot. Get your hook. And you're going to make a chain of 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So I have my 24 chains. You're going to make two more chains to make a total of 26 chains. And then you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook. So starting with this one, one, two, three, and into the fourth, you're going to place a double crochet into it. Like that. And then you're going to go into each and every chain with one double crochet. So the beginning chain three counts as a double crochet as well. That way we shall have a total of 24 double crochets uh, for row one. So I'm placing one double crochet in each and every chain all the way across. All right, we're coming to the end of the row and I'm placing my very last double crochet into the very last chain, just like that. And you should be having a total of 24 double crochets. Now we're going on to row two. Row two, you're going to make a chain of three, which counts as our very first double crochet. Turn your work. So we are not doing any increases. So this is attached to the very first stitch. So we're going to place a double crochet into the next stitch like that. All the way across, placing one double crochet in each and every stitch and at the end of row two you should still have the same exact number of stitches that you had for row one which is 24 double crochets including the chain three that counts as one of our double crochets So we're coming to the end of row two and I'm placing one double crochet on top of the chain three since it counts as a double crochet. So into the top chain, you'll place your double crochet there. And this is what you'll have. We're going to continue building, repeating row two until we have a total of 18 rows of double crochets. So 
I did a total of 18 rows and this is what I have. My rectangle measures uh, 9 inches. You can see this by 5 inches. 9 by 5. And I have a total of 18 rows all together. And each row has 24 double crochets. So let's go on to the next step. So after your green, you're going to put it aside. And now we're going to introduce black. Sorry for the dull colors, but I'll try my best to explain everything. So um, we're going to introduce our black color and we're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to make a chain of 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So after your sixteen chains, um, you're going to chain two more, one and two, and then go into the fourth chain from the hook. So prepare for a double crochet by yarning over, and count one two three and into the fourth you're going to place one double crochet and then continue to double crochet once in each and every chain So we're coming to the end of row one of black and we are placing one double crochet into the very last chain just like that so you should be having a total of 16 double crochets including the chain three at the beginning of the row now row two you're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet turn your work and then you're going to prepare for a double crochet we are going to create an add a decrease. We are going to create a decrease. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, which is the second stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all. That way, we have joined these two stitches into one. This one and this one. So you're going to place one double crochet in each of the next stitches until you have three stitches left on your row. So we have three stitches left, the chain three on the edge and then the two stitches here. So we are going to do another decrease. So yarn over, insert your hook into the third last stitch, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the second last stitch, pull up a loop. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through all. So that is going to create our second decrease on this side. So we're going to go into the top chain of the chain three on the edge with one double crochet. That way we have created a decrease on this side and on this side. So we're going to repeat this row until we are almost out of stitches. So at this point you should be having a total of 14 double crochets. And now you're going to make a chain of three, turn your work, and repeat row two. So create your first decrease here on this side. Join the two stitches into one. And then one double crochet in each of the next stitches until you have three stitches left. So I have three stitches left. I'm going to do a decrease. 
and then one double crochet into the very last stitch sorry for the color i hope i'm explaining it well if you don't get it please uh leave a comment in the comment section down below i'll help you out repeat the decreases until you have a total of four stitches and once you get to this level you have the two edge stitches and then the two decrease stitches which makes a total of four you're going to make a chain of three turn your work and we're going to join everything into one so yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over go into the very last stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then you're going to pull through all the four loops and then chain one and cut your yarn then pull through so this is what you'll have you'll have a small triangle you're going to do the same exact thing repeat the same process for your second triangle you should have two identical triangles at this point now we are done with our black color put it aside now we're going to start on so get your next color which is yellow and this is going to create the stripes in the middle of the flag and you're going to make a slip knot you're going to make a chain of four like that and then go into the very first chain that you made with two double crochets one and two so that means row one should have a total of uh, three double crochets let's go on to row two row two is going to be a chain of three turn your work go into the very first stitch with one double crochet then one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet into the next so that's a total of four double crochets let's go on to row three chain three turn your work now we are going to go into the next stitch with one double crochet one double crochet into the next and one double crochet into the last stitch and we're going to keep repeating row three until until we have a total of 18 uh, rows all together and I'll meet you back at that point so each row should be having a total of four double crochets guys when you have your 18 rows of four double crochets okay the very first row only has three so a total of 18 rows now on row 19 you're going to make a chain of three turn your work and we're going to join everything so yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over go into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then yarn over go into the very last stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two you'll have four loops on your hook and yarn over pull through all and then chain one and cut your yarn this is what the strip should look like now you're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing for your second strip so that you have two identical pieces and then now it's time to assemble each and everything you're going to bring back all the pieces that you have of the flag and you are going to place the triangles like this facing uh, each other the pointed parts of the triangles and then now these strips are going to run across the flag like this and like this so at this point you're going to get your stitch markers get your stitch markers and pin down the corners of 
the flag so I'm just going into the corners and then I'm attaching the yellow I'm doing this so that the things don't be moving around while I attach everything together. I want a very neat finish. So I'm trying to put everything in place before I do the joining. Something like this. Now that means the only thing that's not attached is this black onto the green. So. You're going to get more stitch markers actually you need many of them now we had a total of 24 stitches for the green row the first row of green so 24 and then this one has a total of 16 that means 24 minus 16 is 8 so that means we leave four stitches on this side and four stitches on this side so i'll count one two three four and into the fifth i will attach my very first stitch of black like that and do the same thing on this side one two three four into the fifth i will attach my black do the same thing on this side Okay, so this is what we have. And now, um, let me see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight rows of black. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Onto the eighth, we're going to identify the eighth row on the yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on top of the eighth row, you're going to attach this the corner of the triangle and then the top of the eighth row of the second strip one two three four five six seven and eight okay and then you pin it down as well and then get another stitch marker and do the same thing on this side one two three four five six seven and eight on top of the eighth row on top of the triangle and one two three four five six seven and eight and on top of the eighth row of the second strip okay this is what we have now so after pinning down everything we're just going to get a dunning needle all right guys uh, this is the dunning needle that i'll be using for my joining and uh, okay i don't know where i'm going to start from but i think i should start with the edges i'm going to get a short strand of uh, green or black i think i'll go with green or black i think black is a better color to join with so you're going to get your black and thread your dunning needle like that and we're going to start joining each and everything so we shall start from the exact corner so into the very first stitch and into the corner of the yellow remember we've attached to the stitch marker all right, so we're joining those points that we had joined with our stitch markers. So we're going to go into all those points. Trying to attach them. Like that. 
and then into these stitches that don't have any attachment they're like three stitches we're going to put one on this side of yellow like this and then two stitches that are unattached we're going to attach them into the first row of black so that the black can lie onto the flat edge of the green something like this if you can see this if we were going to leave that space unattached it would have created that awkwardness at this point so from here we're going to just attach one one stitch onto the stitch on the opposite side so all the 16 stitches one into each of green So we are joining until we get to our next stitch marker. Okay, we are going to remove our stitch marker there. Like that. And then we are going to do the same exact thing that we did here that we did on this side. So we're getting the next two stitches to attach onto the side of black, the very first row of black. One. And two. And then the third stitch will attach onto the side of yellow like that and then we are attaching the corner where we have the stitch marker and then at this point you can remove the stitch marker and remove the one on this side as well so i like to attach twice into the corner stitches and this is exactly what we have you can see we've attached um, the black onto the green as well as the strips so from here you're going to just leave that hanging and you're going to repeat the same exact thing on this side okay guys this is what we have after everything now i think i'm going to use the same exact strand that we have here to join this middle section here so i'm going to use black so i'm going to just push the yarn back onto the inside so that i can start Hold on. So that I can start attaching the yellow onto the black. 
So actually now uh, we are attaching the very the second row of black because the first row was attached onto the edge of green so we are attaching the second row of black onto the first row of yellow just like that i'll attach to two times and then go into the next row and attach onto the next row of black Okay, go on to the next row. Next row. Alright, so this is what we have right now. I know that joining is a little bit weird. I think I should have used something that is not so visible, but either way, I think it's okay. It's actually creating a whole pattern here. So after this, you're going to join the middle section. Just like that then you're going to remove this stitch marker and go on to this side as well Okay, so I'm done attaching the black onto the yellow strips and I think that's it. I'm not going to be attaching the yellow onto the green because I feel like this is just enough attaching. There's going to be a space here definitely in between here. You can just go ahead and use a strand, a green strand or yeah, actually a green strand so that you pin down this section here so that we don't have something that's like oh this actually looks like a hair band the, you know those twist hair bands yeah something like this um but today we are making a flag we are not doing the hair band so we are going to weave in all our ends i'm going to weave in each and every end into the same exact color for example i have a black tail here so i'll just go into the black to a few stitches of black and weave in the tail then i'll cut my yarn okay guys after weaving in all your ends uh this is what your work will look like i know it's not yet that definite but we are going to do a row of single crochets all the way around and then we shall get the perfect rectangle so you're going to get a little i'm going to find another way of pinning down this middle section you're going to get a little strand of yellow and you're going to pass it down sorry for this You're going to pass it down in the center just like that 
and then skip a few stitches and then insert it around the middle section just like that and we're going to make a knot I used yellow because it won't show on the right side of the work but even if it shows on the wrong side we won't be able to see it because this part is going to be attached onto the top so this is exactly what we have we have the Jamaican flag finally and uh, we're going to get our hook and yarn we're going to just work one last row of edging on our flag so make a slip knot and we are going to go into the corner into the very first row of green and attach our yarn chain one single crochet in each and every row twice so two single crochets in each and every row in part and i'm placing my last two single crochets into the very last row just like that so this is what we have right now and now uh, we're going to place three more double crochets into the same exact space so that we can turn onto the side of the flag as you can see here from here we're going to go into each and every stitch on this side just find where to place your single crochet stitches without missing any this may be a little bit tricky but make sure you go into each and every stitch And when you make it across, you're going to go into the very first row of green and place a total of seven double crochets. Five. Five double crochets into the very first row so that we can turn and face this side. So after this, you're going to go into each row with two single crochets. Alright, so when you make it all the way around, you will place two more double crochets into the very first row of green where we started the black round from. And then you're going to go into the very first, sorry, two more single crochets, not double crochets, two more single crochets. And then we shall go into the very first single crochet and place a slip stitch. After that, you're going to chain one and leave a long tail behind because this is the tail that's going to attach this flag onto our yellow top so just pull through this long strand like that so this is what we have for our flag when we turn it to the back it's mainly green 
with a black border. Then at the front, we have the generous structure of the flag. Now let's introduce our halter top. All right, so here we have our halter top. If you haven't yet checked out this tutorial, we already have a step-by-step -step tutorial for it. And I'll be leaving it on the screen as well as the description box below so that you can go and give it a try and then come back to attach your flag onto the halter top. So I'm going to attach this flag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, 14 rows down, down my halter top. That's where I'm going to place it, or at least 13 rows. Let me put it a bit up so that it's not so low. Now, um, you're going to get your strand. At this point, you can decide to pin your work, actually. You can pin it, but you can also attach the flag while eyeballing it. Uh, the placement of the flag. Just make sure it's in the exact middle. And this is fine. So I'm going to just eyeball and make sure I attach this flag onto the halter top. You can even use pins and pin it down so that it doesn't keep moving while you attach. So I'm just doing a random placement of stitches so that we can have this flag attached onto the top. So I left a very long strand and as you can see, uh, we have to go all the way around the flag while attaching it all the way from here to here to here to here. So now that I'm done with one side, I'm going to start attaching onto the next side. Just do a random placement. I am not counting the number of stitches that I skip or anything I'm just making sure that the flag doesn't fold or lose shape as I join it onto the halter top and I think uh, while you attach you get an edging that is you get those lines and they're also beautiful. That's part of design. So don't try to fight them so much because they give a very pretty effect as well. Let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer to use invisible strand or you feel like these lines also add to the texture and the beauty of the top as well? Right now we're going on to the next side. So
so you're going to make sure that um, where you attach your very last stitch the rows are aligned for example if this is the 14th row make sure this corner lands on the 14th row of the top as well so so that um, the flag is centered in the middle okay look what we have guys you can even leave it like this maybe it can be a pocket i don't know but i'm going to attach all the way around why would you even have a pocket on your bust area just thought about it but anyway you don't know what design can do to you okay so i'm going to attach this side and i'll be back to show you the final look when i turn my work onto the wrong side look what we have the black is actually not peeping through as much so All right, so we've come to the end of the flag and this is what we have. I'm pleased with the edging. I feel like it's rough, it's giving. I don't know what vibe it's giving, but I love the edging of the flag. Uh, it looks quite uniform. And uh, from now, I'm going to just weave in this tail. And then you're going to cut your yarn. And guys, this is the final look of our Jamaican halter top. And as I had mentioned before, we already have a tutorial for the halter top separately. This tutorial was to teach you how to make the flag and also to attach it onto the halter top. So uh, that's it guys for today. Let me show you the final look and thanks so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and let me know down in the comment section. Do you still want the best? or you feel like the halter top is a better option for you since it's breathable and something that so many people would relate to as opposed to the vest. That's my own personal opinion. So you can give your opinions in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.